So last night we ended up getting an update for Warzone and it was something that gave us our first major weapons tuning pass of the Caldera era. With Vanguard integration and so many weapons on deck, where do these all stand here? Raven gave us a little bit of some patch notes that clarified some stuff and then kind of made it even more confusing in other areas. So today we're breaking down everything you need to know, these patch notes and the changes that we know of, what you should be aware of and what you can craft your loadouts with going forward. So that said, as we go along, let me know your thoughts down below. Do you guys like some of these changes made? Maybe not so much, whatever the case may be, drop your thoughts down below. But if you enjoyed the video, do me a favor, drop a like on the video. And of course, if you are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button if you guys don't want to miss a single thing regarding all things Vanguard, all things Warzone. We have so much stuff here coming up for season one still that you guys do not want to miss. So if you're part of that nearly 70% of viewers that are not subscribed, and you'd like to help us out on that road to half a million while staying up to date with everything, I'd love to have you in the community. Two final things, a big thank you to these legends on screen who've used creator code ESPRESSO in the shop to get either their battle pass or anything else they decide to pick up. If you'd like to help support the channel a little further, this is an entirely optional way to do so. Don't ever feel pressured to, but if you decide to, tweet me a picture. I'd love to shout out some of your generous support. And finally, my friends over at G Fuel have code ESPRESSO bumped up to 30% off in celebration of the season one launch. So if you guys want to pick up a restock, try anything out for the very first time, link in the description below. That said, Let's talk about these weapon changes. I'm honestly not sure how to start this because when we look at the patch notes, it's something that provides us a little bit of clarity, but realistically, not a whole lot when it comes to one specific section of these weapon adjustments. The patch notes provided last night by Raven end up saying numerous changes have been made to Vanguard weapons and attachments. Names, descriptions, pros, cons, and stat bars have been updated in game to reflect these changes. So in a sense, they said here we made some changes, but what we changed is kind of up to you to find out. And I'm not going to lie, man, that annoys the hell out of me. Like, obviously, I'm not in the position to make these patch notes myself, but that's kind of the whole point of patch notes is to tell us what actually changed. So over the course of the next 24 hours or so, we're likely to see a bunch of things changed out here that you might not have initially noticed. Like the big things that are right now being reported is that we have some changes to weapons like the NZ-41, the BAR, and the STG-44, all having different attachments now in terms of the magazines, offering up a little bit more ammo as opposed to where they were based. So now deviating slightly from what we have in Vanguard, but making it a little bit more viable for, say, trios and quads play within Warzone. This technically could change a lot and Raven said that this right now with what we have with the weapons should be considered the sort of baseline here going forward but I mean we already played with these weapons for a whole day a little bit over that depending if you had early access to Caldera via Vanguard ownership so why can't we just know what changed here from what was beforehand. I get you're trying to set up a baseline, but like, tell us what's changing. But they at least did detail the rest of it. They said that they made some changes to the following Modern Warfare and Black Ops Cold War weaponry. For assault rifles, we saw the AK-47 from Black Ops Cold War have its initial recoil deviation increased. So adding a little bit more kick when you take those initial couple of shots. And that's something that might make this a little bit less usable as opposed to where it was beforehand. It was absolutely a powerhouse. We've talked about this here in the past. And it was one of those weapons that kind of dominated the meta for a little bit Bit within Black Ops Cold War and Warzone. The EM2 also was adjusted where that had its neck damage multiplier decreased to 1.1, coming down from 1.2, its recoil magnitude and deviation also increased. So adding more kick and stability issues here if you're firing over long times. So that's something to consider, the EM2 likely being that top weapon pre-Vanguard integration. So to see this kind of knock down a peg or two is definitely something of substantial value. The Marksman Rifles, we had a couple here with this. Really, two of them are exactly the same though but that being the crossbows from Modern Warfare and Black Ops Cold War, both have identical changes here, so they really are just coming down to whichever one you want to use in terms of skins. The neck damage was increased to 250, up from 200. The upper torso damage was increased to 240, up from 200. And the lower torso damage was increased to 220, which was up from 200. Now, the next Marksman Rifle was that of the Modern Warfare Marksman Rifle Charlie, or car 98k this is something that ended up getting a flinch resistance decrease by 62 percent which is substantial I meaning if you take shots here while you're aiming down sight your aim will go sky high for a little bit here right afterwards and it will mess up that initial shot that you can end up having raven ended up mentioning that this and the swiss k31 benefited greatly from heavily reduced flinch and is something that is being reduced in an effort to no longer be able to challenge assault rifles as consistently as before so that's a pretty big change here to that and one that you definitely may notice if you've been on the car 98k from modern warfare for quite some time 
The Ballistic Knife and a couple of other melees had a couple of changes as well. The Ballistic Knife saw an upper torso damage increase to 248 up from 246. Lower torso, upper arm, lower arm, upper leg, and lower leg damage increases as well. An overall buff of minuscule amounts, but that is something that's interesting. Again, if you do hit in certain locations, you might not consider it because it is still technically a melee, but you do need to be specific with your shot placement on that ballistic portion of the ballistic knife. The baseball bat had its lunge distance decreased by 47%. The battle axe lunge decreased by 38%. The cane lunge distance decreased by 46%. And the mace lunge distance decreased by 42%. This kind of going in an effort with these sweeping changes to the melee systems and how they operate within Warzone now post Caldera and post Vanguard integration. The Gallo SA-12 from Black Ops Cold War had a movement speed decrease by 1.2% and an ADS movement speed decreased by 8.6% here with this. Sniper rifles coming back to it, the Swiss K-31 from Black Ops Cold War, like we just mentioned, that also has a flinch resistance decrease by 62%, making that something that, again, is a little bit less viable here. You can't be as aggressive a player with it, and that's something that is absolutely going to be something you notice almost probably immediately. If you take any gunfights where you are at all aggressive, you might be taking shots. You'll notice that that flinch resistance is toned down quite a bit. The SMGs, we saw three of these adjusted to close out our weapon tuning here with what was listed. The OTS-9 was a big one here up on deck with the maximum damage decrease down to 30, which was previously at 31. The headshot damage multiplier was also decreased to 1.33, down from 1.52. And on paper, it might not seem like a whole ton, but statistically speaking, that will at minimum add another shot total to how much you need to kill with the OTS here from beforehand. If my math checks out, I think it was like five headshots or something you needed to land here with that. You now need six with that. So that is going to be something that is definitely a noticeable change as well. The Black Ops Cold War MP5 had a maximum damage decrease to 20 down from 31. So a major downscale here for that, a major nerf to the maximum damage of the Black Ops Cold War MP5. And the headshot damage multiplier was decreased to 1.41 down from 1.45. So you can still make up some of that here in headshot shots, just kind of like how it was beforehand. It was lethal and headshots if you hit those, but now you're definitely going to need that. And then finally, the Modern Warfare MP5 on the other side of the coin here, it had its fire rate decreased to 0.08, which is down from 0.075, and the sprint to fire speed was decreased by 2.6%. All of these changes only, again, affecting Warzone. What they do in their main native application of Black Ops Cold War and Modern Warfare, that's entirely up to Infinity Ward as well as Treyarch, so these changes, again, only specifying for Warzone. Now, to close out these patch notes, they do say that an imminent update will further address Bloom and include adjustments to weapons, including the PPSH-41. Now, that doesn't give us a whole lot on what to expect, but it is something that does, for the first time, I think, publicly in patch notes, address Bloom. Might have seen it addressed one other time beforehand, but Bloom, for those that are not aware here of this, is something that when you, at a distance, when you're shooting, it's deviation from where your red dot actually is, your pinpoint precision target that you're actually aimed up on. There'll be slight deviations in where that bullet it leads. Some weapons have more bloom than others. Snipers, I know that that's something that I've seen some comments about. They don't have bloom to my knowledge, so it might just be a situation of some off-center scopes. If you're feeling like you're missing some shots, or if you're like me, you might just be missing the shots. But weapons like the Automaton, they have some pretty tight bloom spreads, but then weapons like the AS-44, that has an incredibly wide bloom spread. So some weapons will definitely vary more than others, but they're apparently going to be addressing this. Whether or not they update it or not, we'll have to wait and see. And then other weapons like the PPSH-4 41 will be adjusted further, which is interesting. Again, it comes back down to why don't we just know what was changed here? Why can't we just get an answer as to what specifically was changed? That's kind of the purpose of patch notes, not just to say, hey, this changed, but good luck finding it. So, that's where we're at here at this. That is the weapon tuning pass that we got for Warzone here with Caldera and Warzone Pacific. But again, a lot of question marks. We'll have to see how everything breaks down. Maybe they expand upon this a little later, but for right now, that's what we have. Right now, it almost kind of seems like we are seeing a push towards these Vanguard weapons. We saw it kind of with Black Ops Cold War last year. It was more so a conspiracy theory at that point because the integration was handled so strangely and it was honestly a broken mess. So it was one of those things where, okay, maybe we have two shot weapons on purpose where people will have to go and buy Black Ops Cold War. Maybe that's more apparent that this is actually happening here with this, or that really comes down to what you believe. But anyways, that's what we're going to call it. So let me know your thoughts down below. Do you like any of these changes so far? Are you hoping that we get some more expansion upon what was changed with the Vanguard weaponry? I know that I personally am. Whatever the case, drop your thoughts down below. But if you enjoyed the video, do me a favor, drop a like on the video. And of course, if you are new to the channel, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing regarding all things Warzone, all things Vanguard. Whatever the case may be, we got you covered here on the channel. So if you're interested, hit the subscribe button. That's it. Thanks so much for watching. My name is Espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care.
and peace.